WoW has never been so broken. 20 hours of Mop Remix. So I watched some people playing this over the weekend, and honestly, it looks really cool. It looks like Blizzard actually is giving more than they've even sold us to believe that they're giving us. The Infinite Dragonflight storyline and how this whole thing began, the lore behind it all, the fun that people are having, the way it's breaking the game. It just seems like a really fun way for people to level alts and uh, re-experience the Mists of Pandaria content. Let's see what Bellular has to say about how the event went over the weekend. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, they just what? deleted that boss. What the hell? Did he just go from 50% health to nothing? Look at his health. Right here, you're going to see, like, just all of a sudden. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> it. Welcome back, and deleted. what a hell of a weekend it was. The PTR was flooded with people trying to find out what Mop Remix is, what it plays like, what things they can get when it goes live, and now we pretty much know all that. It's honestly kind of more insane than we thought, so yeah. today in this video, you're going to learn all about it. We'll kick it off with moving. You can drag and ride. So this is very much not Mop Classic or anything close to it. Oh, this they even is have Mop orbs just to collect. played inside Dragonflight, just with your Time Runner character being locked there and a dozen other or so insane twists we'll get into. All of that is extremely obvious when you do the pretty cool intro to this with the infinite Dragonflight. Yeah, this is, that is, this is what I was talking about. There's actually an entire lore storyline, canonized in retail, wow, lore storyline about why this remix event is happening. It's really cool. Not teasing any massive lore implications. And then you just start dragon riding around. You get your talents every level, playing Demon Hunter or Evoker or an Allied Race or whatever floats your boat. All with Dragonflight's UI and visual and engine updates. And honestly, it all feels pretty damn good, just like yeah. our sponsor. It's a tool Ooh. I use all the time for convenience, Ooh. security, and to save some money. NordVPN.com forward slash. Not only does it feel good, it still looks good. Go there, I think they up it a little bit, but Pandaria still looks like a great looking content, and I'm not going to lie. It looked really fun, and it looked really good. Now you probably know Nords from their VPN. They're actually also a suite of security and convenience tools. I always like Pandaria. The core VPN itself, of course, lets you use the internet as if you're anywhere. You can bypass regional restrictions and content, access streaming libraries of other countries, and even save money by region hopping for a better deal, which, uh, for me is now just a part of my holiday planning ritual like the two times I was over in the States last year. And hey, say if your phone is connected to a local network and some traffic is blocked, just swipe over to the Nord app, turn it on, and boom, your restrictions are gone. They have apps on every major platform, they're super easy to use, and they're more than a VPN. You get the dark web. If you lived in China, you had to use Nord to play. A data leak so you Until can now. change your passwords and be proactive in your security. You've got their threat protection suite of tools as well, and they've got more things up their sleeve like their password password manager NordPass that yeah, helps you be secure. Yeah. And come on, forgetting passwords is just not something we should have to deal with in the modern day. So if all this stuff sounds interesting to you, check out nordvpn.com forward slash Battler Warcraft. The link's just down below for you to click. And there you'll get four months off a two-year plan backed by their 30-day money-back guarantee. Very nice. Cheers, Nord. With that said, let's go. This is not chromie time. With the experimental gearing and the gem mechanics, this doesn't even feel close to chromie time. This is more like peering into an alternative universe and seeing a crazy... Like, from what I've seen, if I had to compare it to something, I would honestly make it... I would summarize it by saying it's a Torghast run of Pandaria. Like, the power-ups are insane, the abilities are insane, it breaks the game intentionally so, and it's really fun, it looks like. I, I, now, I would not put pair Torghast with fun because of the repetitiveness of how many times you had to do it. But that first time you ran Torghast, if you remember that feeling and thinking, oh, this is cool, it's kind of like what it looks like. So, uh, I mean, putting it together with Torghast and saying fun, most people won't associate those two together. But I would say the abilities and everything and how it breaks the game, that was fun recognizable almost version of WoW. Blood Death Knights using Blink, Paladins with access to Vanish, slotting your helm with a new spell that drops your party's HP to one but shields them instead, uh, and doing whatever the hell this thing is. Pretty cool. Or just going and pulling a full quest worth of mobs and watching <laughs> this is them pop awesome. like balloons because of your well-planned, not just character build, but gem build. 
because they really <laughs> are crap. that impactful. Another Holy thing, crap. you can level in raids. That's awesome. Seriously, one of the fastest ways to level up in Mop Remix is just to queue for LFR while you're playing. Uh, bosses <clears> drop <throat> extra XP that ends nice. up being upwards of half a level, and with the speed that some LFR bosses go down, it's basically Holy power crap. leveling with a queue time. Pretty crazy. That's Just really cool. I think this is such a cool way to level, man. Leveling up through a raid, that's so badass. I really hope that when this Pandaria remix event ends, that they do like a Wrath remix, a BC remix, whatever, because it's such a cool way to level up an alt. Like, one reason why I don't have alts is because I don't care to redo old content. Like, that's why I'm not really a classic Andy either. I don't care to go back and redo old content. But you're not redoing old content here. You're breaking old content, which is really cool, the way you can do this. And leveling up through a raid just sounds awesome to me. So our next thing is, you can't get jewelry. Yes, rings. Yes, Next, we are trinkets. Kings. They're not really a thing, at least initially, because they are rewards for basically endgame achievements. But otherwise, those items just don't drop. So yeah, gearing feels very different, wildly different in this game mode. It'll take a while to get used to, but the game is still flooding you with minor upgrades, and it just lets you destroy your old gear for bronze. Oh, by the way, one thing, he just said it, bronze. One thing that I think nobody has noticed yet how awesome is bronze? The craziest concept. I don't know how Blizzard thought of this. Imagine one currency that does everything. That's what bronze is right here. Bronze is literally a currency that you can use to upgrade gear. You can use it to buy gear and you get it for selling your gear. The, imagine instead of the crest system, the, the, the flight stone system, the gold, all this random shit that they've got in the current game. We, we, we make jokes about every time a patch comes out, we're going to get another piece of currency. We're literally getting another one for Season 4 with the whole gem or whatever the hell it's called that you're going to use to buy gear. It's like the new Dinar system. In this new event, you just have bronze, and it does everything. Wow, what a, what a mind-blowing concept. And it works really well. It's really good. I hope one day they kind of bring this into retail. Just all the currency bloats are ridiculous. Uh, more on what bronze is later, but basically it feels really nice to just level up and progress, filling in those slots just, well, it feels damn currencies. good. The actual gearing flow as you level up feels great in this incarnation of WoW. And all that's not even talking about the Cloak of Infinite Potential, which is aptly named. You pick this thing up from the intro quest, and then every mob and quest reward box in this mode can permanently upgrade Wait, it. What are you talking about? Titan Residuum? Yeah, they tried to do some currency bloat mitigation in BFA, but we still had tons of currency. It was ridiculous. Yeah, the one, one currency that eliminated five currencies plus the other 30 currencies we still had. We, talk, we still had all the freaking Titan, the Anima shit. We literally had the necklace, the Azeroth necklace that had its own currency as well. Dumb as shit, man. We still had a ton of stuff to deal with in BFA. With these things called threads, with main stat, stamina, any secondary or tertiary stat, and especially bonus XP gain. So you can have tons of bonus XP, tons of move speed, leech, bunch of extra damage stats, and it's shared in part across all of your alts. Basically, just keep playing, and that thing will just get more and more powerful. Leveling, I know a lot of you are excited to get loads of alts up, and man, you're gonna be able to. You can power level fast. We haven't had enough time to fully test this in PTR, but oh, yeah, the higher saying. level you are, the more cloak threads drop. Way more. Like, one stat or XP percent per thread turn into like three at 30, then seven at 50. Damn, and like two hours deleting uh, since hitting 30, this character's XP bonus went from 30-ish to 60-ish. That's crazy. Also, like you just saw, bosses and enemies get obliterated, so it's already pretty <laughs> fast with xp doubled or god forbid tripled or quadrupled um and of course you can dragon ride so yeah 10 to 70 will eventually be a few hours tops the next thing then have you ever wanted a mog a mount or a toy from pandaria Man, but you were just a never few hours to level up an alt from 10 to 70 that's so cool people are going to build out their war bands like crazy through this event or really bother to farm it or never lucky enough for the drop well now's your chance so with bronze the currency that literally everything you do gives oh yeah you, and transmog you can horse just buy them are gonna love this shit at the infinite vendors and those are vendors that you can teleport to with vouchers that you have uh, easy access to it almost feels like an official blizzard private server uh, so if you want the algalon <laughs> mount description. farm bronze the shav anger mount farm bronze or you know farm them up normally get bronze and if you don't get lucky enough to get the thing you want 
Well, just buy it with the bronze that you get from farming all the things. I'm telling you guys, this single currency thing, it's such a, it's so nice. It's so nice and it's so easy to understand. It makes it, it eliminates a lot of issues that currently exist. Well, now I talked about rare mounts and that sort of thing, but yes, it... you can also spend bronze and new stuff. Now, I will warn you, some of these more rare things, like, say, the Shav Anger mount or the Algalon mount, they are actually fairly expensive in bronze. But I do think that that makes sense, given how these are pretty damn rare mounts themselves. And it's not just old mounts and old bits of gear. There are also recolors that you can buy with bronze. So a huge list of recolored gear that was never accessible to players. Things like the Shadow Pan set, but in its proper coloration. Thank you so much, Acid, for the sub. Death Knight of our dance. Scourge. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're looking at this Missa Pandaria remix event. And it honestly looks and, uh, awesome. finally, a golden version of the Astral Cloud Serpent from Elgalon. Uh, that one, though, is This one's going to be a big one. from doing an achievement. That's right. And speaking of... The achievement just involves, like, killing some world bosses, doing a couple things. It's not a really hard achievement to get, so I think a lot of people are going to go for that mode. New old things and achievements. You can pick up Chen Storm Stouts genuinely. Doing the raids as part of the achievement, Either for too. your head or for your back. A lovely touch and his keg from doing some remix achievements. Uh, these are from finishing the Krasarang Wilds and Kunlai Summit. Uh, but what does that actually mean? And that's where things are a little bit different because finish basically means pick your type of content and uh, just do all of it. So yeah, do you do like you questing? Want. Then complete the campaign and bam, zone done. Do you hate questing? If so, that's actually okay. Explore the zone and kill a bunch of rares. That will unlock the achievement for so you. Cool. Do you want to play group content well? Then do all the dungeons and scenarios, or if applicable, say raids in a zone. And that can be considered done for these big new meta right. achievements. Sometimes you'll need to do two. One thing that I keep thinking about, and, and I wonder if Blizzard can do this in some way to like make the whole story more comprehensive and understandable. I wonder if they can turn leveling, just general leveling, into something like this. Because right now, we all know, like, if somebody makes a new character for the first time, the leveling system's kind of janked. Like, leveling up to Dragonflight, I understand they tried the new, uh, you know, the new island starting zone, and then you go pick an expansion, but it's still kind of weird. The whole thing's kind of broken. Whereas this leveling experience just seems like a ton of fun. But the issue would be, like, if you introduce somebody to the game this way, they're going to get to cap level, and then they're going to be like, what the hell, where'd all my crazy broken abilities go? So it's not exactly, like, a perfect solution, but I do wonder if they're going to be able to grab some stuff from this to learn how to make leveling uh, more fun, more variable. You could pick how you want to level kind of thing. It's it's an interesting concept. And I'm sure this remix event is going to come back in some way. But what I hope is that they can fix just regular retail leveling in some way based on this event. Zone to finish it for the rewards, but basically this is very <coughs> much like a, a Diablo have remix, it your yeah. way approach. So for many of you who already have lore master or maybe just don't want to do group content, I mean you're going to be very well served here. Here's an example: if you want that golden astral serpent, you need to finish Veil of Eternal Blossoms. Right. That basically just means finishing two of these four achievements. Exalted with the Golden Lotus, Exalted with the August Celestials, Explore and Kill Rares, or Do the Veil Instances. That's, of course, Mogashan Paul's Terrace of the Endless Springs, and for some reason also, the Scarlet and Skolomance dungeons, which oh. is bizarre. Still, though, there's a freedom in this that I think is pretty great. Yeah. Now, speaking of achievements, here's a neat quirk. If you're an achievement hunter, clear your schedule because, well, there's an achievement for just about everything in Mists of Pandaria in this mode. Clearing scenarios, raids, rares, dungeons, across all difficulties, doing reps, doing campaigns, everything. And when you do an achievement, you get a stack of bronze, from 200 bronze for One a currency. minor bronze cache, up to getting a thousand bronze from the greater bronze cache. So yes, finally, instead of achievements just giving you random points, you actually get something that's useful that you can spend. And that's it's even awesome. better than that because all of the achievements that have a real counterpart, those are also triggered by doing the remix version. That's so, so awesome. if you want to go and get Lore Master or you can, Exalt- You can literally gear out by being an achievement whore. That's amazing. What a, what a cool concept. ...with those reputations, if you do them in Remix, well, it, it will be there in live as well. So you won't have to go and do, say, uh, Golden Lotus Exalted twice if you do it once That's in right, Remix. Rob. You'll get the achievement on regular non-Remix as well. And speaking of those reps, by the way, 
they'll be pretty easy. Uh, just like with time walking, this has you bonus burn down all the mobs So far, we found out that the Order of the Cloud Serpent has a 100% bonus attached. Others are likely the same. And there are new aid the uh, repeatable turn-in quests for Very every cool. faction, asking for 10 of the farmable lesser charms of good fortune currency. Yeah, and you know what? Also, I'm betting that they'll kind of up the reputation towards the end of this event. As this event is about to close, I bet you they're going to do like a 2x reputation week or something. They're doing it right now with Plunderstorm. It seems to be a common theme that every time one of these like limited time events is about to end, they like pump up the reputation gains at the very end. So if you haven't started this, you're, I'm sure you're going to have plenty of time to still get it done. Um, that are, you know, from, say, like, Timeless Isles mobs and things like that. So, yeah, you could go do your regular dailies, or you could just get a whole bunch of charms from doing literally anything else and turn those charms into rep. So, again, that theme of there being a lot of freedom and things being pretty damn generous with progress... That's absolutely running awesome. through here. You Such a cool event. Great. Transmog is free in this mode. Nothing costs gold at all. Oh, damn. So if you just want to play dress up, this is definitely the place. Now, you can also look great by getting these class sets. These are for finishing That's Landfall right. and Isle of Thunder. And yes, if you're keen-eyed, you might have noticed, these are recolors of last year's gorgeous class sets. Basically, if you get the achievements on one character, then you get the stuff for that character's class. But it also unlocks for you the ability to purchase armor and weapons for what? every other class using bronze. Look at that. Man, I'm telling you guys, this single currency concept is mind-blowing, but it's amazing. I don't even want to think about I the want retail to of do that this. tender value that all of this would have been if it was actually on the store. Overall, though, pretty damn neat. And our final thing today, the PTR was packed. And when this goes live, you're absolutely going to see Pandaria flooded with people like it's 2012 again. If you've ever wanted to experience Mists of Pandaria, uh, obviously not exactly as it was, but like an actual big MMO experience with loads of players and the world <clears throat> being just vibrant and packed, this absolutely yeah. will be a time to do it. The loads of players thing is amazing. Uh, watching people play it and uh, on the PTR the other day was so much fun because there were so many people. Basically, this is an open world event. That's what it is. Because you're getting so many people onto the Mists of Pandaria continent all at once. You're getting them onto Pandaria. It's just like, it looks like you're doing some kind of like world boss or something. There's just people everywhere, which is the best way to play an MMO. Imagine that. People everywhere. How much fun is that? Between how honestly fun a bunch of this stuff ends up being. And I hope they keep it that way. way like, it just really is like bundle Season everybody of, together. It's like Season of Discovery, Mists of Pandaria, but... Um, I, I don't know, like super fast uh, on hopped up in many different substances mode. That's that's essentially the feeling here. This is World of Warcraft, essentially like you've never played it before. At least here yeah. I thought I'd kind of bring you a, a bunch of interesting findings and things that uh, I just thought you'd like to know. And I've got to say, I think I'll be spending quite a bit more time in this than I would have assumed from their PvE thing. I mean, even back when I thought it might have been that Vampire Survivors mode. Because, uh, yeah, as much as that would be cool, this is Mists of Pandaria, an expansion <clears throat> I love that Mists I love. Of Pandaria. I could go do heroic love it. Throne of Thunder, but with a totally busted level 70 version. I might version do it just to see how busted things can I'm get. kind of familiar with, with, but with a whole bunch of twists to make it different. Oh, man. Yeah, they're cooking. They're cooking. And uh, so are we. So come back tomorrow. That's it for today's video. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Great video. And yeah, this whole event's a lot of fun. Artemis, you said, will you play this no DK allowed, though? Well, there is DKs allowed. That's another cool thing about it. Even classes um, that weren't available back when Mists came out, you can play them. Now, DKs were allowed, but like, say you wanted to play Demon Hunter, you could do that. So it's a really cool thing. You could even make a drag theory. Whatever alt that you've dreamed of making, you can use this Mr. Pandaria event to do it. Now, my warband is probably going to be four DKs. That's all I do, man. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, but people actually seem excited for this one. I agree. I agree, Rob. It's a really cool event, and, you know, it's a nice filler content, a good way to build up your your big feature warband feature, right, that's coming up in the next expansion. This will be a nice way to kind of fill out those alts and get ready to play uh, the War Within.